My name is Brenda. I work with City of Tempe Neighborhood Services. I want to thank everyone for uh, making the time today over lunch to learn about Character Area 6 and Southwest Tempe and planning. Uh, we have a presentation today. It'll be about 15 minutes or so, then we'll open it up for Q&A. If you think of questions along the way, feel free to um, you know, throw them in the chat and then we'll be able to answer those when we get to the Q&A portion. If you wanna make note of the slide number two, you can do that as well. I am going to toss, toss it over to Long Range Planner Ambika Adhikari. Uh, over to you, Ambika. Thank you so much, Brenda. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for taking time to come to this meeting. My name is Ambika Adhikari, Principal Planner with the Planning Division of the Community Development Department. With me today in presenting it is Jacob Payne, a senior planner, and then we have a host of other staff, including Brenda Clark, Sana Warner, um, Brian Levick, and other interdepartment staff in case there are any questions that people might have in any of, of those topics. So today we'll talk about the character area six planning process. Uh, right now it's on the Southwest Tempe. And this is the first uh, kickoff meeting, community outreach meeting. Uh, Jeka, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, so today uh, I talked about uh, many of the staff that we have from park and recreation, transportation, municipal utilities, and others. And then we'll talk briefly about the character area planning process, which is a part of the general plan vision, both in 2040 and 2050. And then we'll also begin some initial thought process on the character area six, both in terms of what the staff is thinking, but mostly what you, all the stakeholders and the community might think. And then we'll also want to lay down some initial questions that uh, Jacob will present just for the uh, initial thought process. And then anything that you want to discuss later on, we can do during the question and answers and discussion. Uh, Jacob will also present the next steps and timeline. This is the branding. You see the um, address at the bottom. That is the character area six. The website, there's going to be a lot of information in that as we populate, uh, as we move along in the process. Uh, it will also give you a link to the other adopted character area plans. And this is the presentation that uh, will also be uploaded onto that website. So you will have the address. But even if you just look for character areas, Tempe, you'll get the uh, character area website. OK, what is the planning process? The uh, character area planning process is uh, based on the status that we have. Uh, many of you know Tempe is divided into eight character areas altogether, and six of the character area plans have already been completed and adopted by the council. The plan for the character area number six is now being developed, and the last remaining one will be the character area two. The planning process will begin after we complete this towards the end of this year or the beginning of 2045. Here is a snapshot of all the eight character areas in the city of Tempe. As you see, the solid color ones have already been completed, adopted. That is number one, three, four, five, seven, and eight have been adopted. Then the one with the hats, the downward pointing left-hand hats, uh, are the ones that are uh, not still completed. The one in the orange at the southwest corner, the left bottom, number six is the one that is in progress right now. And the last one that we will work on is character number area number two that you see on the top left-hand corner. On the right side of the map, you also see an uh, overlay of the boundary of the character area six on the aerial map of the city of Tempe. So it's a little easier for you to figure out what's going on. We'll describe a little more as we go along. Okay, so character area was actually conceived in the 2040 general plan of Tempe. Uh, although we look at the different year in terms of the vision, 2040 is the vision year, but the plan was actually ratified in 2014 and was adopted in 2013. So that plan conceived of the character area and it provided some initial definition that any area that has some common characteristics and traits uh, in terms of the history, in terms of the neighborhoods, in terms of the landscape, building typology and materials and landscaping would be a character area. And uh, it's not exact science how you define and divide all those delineated boundaries, 
but uh, I think uh, we've done a good job in terms of really organizing the character areas on where the actually should belong. Sometimes they're also delineated by like freeways or the water bodies or arterial roads. Uh, mostly in all the character areas, the HOAs are not split into two different character areas. So that was the reason that you saw that uh, the map that was in the previous uh, drawing. You'll see a lot of pictures that the staff has taken of the character area six so that you can also get a glimpse of the visual image of that area as we go along. Next one. The planning process, uh, just wanted to emphasize that the character area is a high level vision and policy plan. It is not regulatory, but we take it uh, uh, very seriously and it's an important policy plan. The plan usually give uh, background and history of the area. We do a visual survey, both from the community and from the staff and everyone to identify what are the core traits of the area. And then the most important part of the character area planning is there is a design and planning principles that are embedded that we refer to it as we move along with the review of the designs or anything else we do in the future. The character areas also look for the consistency with the council priorities. As you know that the city of Tempe has five council priorities. And then most importantly, these plans are developed and adopted uh, through a consultative process. And these are highly community driven plan. And today is the first of the meetings, but we have website, we'll have many, many more meetings to come. Um, going forward, it's a plan for the community and the, uh, the stakeholders, that particular area can feel that, okay, it is our plan. Uh, it's always a good feeling for the community. And it's also a reference for the developers and other stakeholders on how to design and site plan. And when we review the development and proposals on that particular area, we use it as an important reference on how to review the quality of the design landscaping requirements, plants, and so forth. And obviously the character area plan is also an important input on many things we do, water plans, park and recreation master plans, the general plan, the transportation master plan, and many plans that we do. These are also tied to the uh, council um, performance measures that I talk about before, talked about before. The council priorities are actually measured through the performance measures. And then when the city makes an investment on the infrastructure in the public realm, the character areas also give us a guidance on that. Okay, so um, uh, the character area plan will include scope, vision, character defining traits of that particular area, design guidelines and principles, which are very important and public realm principles. Altogether, the, uh, these documents are typically anywhere between 30 to 60, 70 pages. They're not very long, typically about 40, 50 pages with images and everything. Next one. Uh, also, we need to really be clarified so that there's no confusion that the character area plan is not a regulatory plan. It doesn't change land use and density of the area of the lot, doesn't change the zoning of a property, doesn't make any impact on the private property rights. There's no uh, rental versus ownership kind of implication of the character area plan. It doesn't prohibit any business and retailers doing what they're doing. And then also anything that relate to residential code compliance and public safety and homelessness, which are very important issues. And I'm sure that many people will have a question on that. Those are not exactly the part and within the scope of work of the character area plan. They are, we deal with them with a separate process. But if you have any questions, we'll take them and forward it to the appropriate department. The factors that affect the character area plans are many. So we look at the demographic, we look at the schools, we look at the transit systems, uh, obviously the general plan, uh, the guidance, the economy, employment in that area, uh, what the community and residents and everyone thinks, what the situation of housing, all of that is considered while drafting and going forward with the character area plan. Now the character area plan obviously are consistent and compatible. They fit within the, fit within the jigsaw puzzle of many other plans and policies that we have. For example, the general plan 2040, the general plan 2050, which has been adopted, going for ratification in March, the affordable housing strategy, 
forestry master plan, climate action plan, transportation master plan, water resources plan, park and recreation master plan. And we've also recently adopted a national green construction code. And then obviously we also have uh, other sustainability related plans like the green infrastructure, low impact development plans. All of them will inform the creation of the Calicaria plan. Okay, um, I will go through a few numbers very briefly. Uh, the comparison between Carrick Area 6 and uh, uh, overall city of Tempe. So the planning area in Carrick Area 6 is uh, slightly more than 60 square miles compared to 40 square miles in the city of Tempe. The population is about 28,500 compared to 186,000 in the city. Uh, many other indicators are very similar. The median is the household income is slightly higher here. Uh, the housing units, of course, are proportional to the population. Uh, in terms of education attainment, it's very similar to the citywide uh, data. The owner versus renter occupied units, this particular area has more multifamily inventory units compared to the city. Uh, these are hard to read, but uh, this document will be on the website uh, if people want to go in, uh, look into a little more detail in the racial composition and other demographic data, it is here. And then same thing, if you want to delve a little more deeper into the education level, what number of people, percentage of the people have different uh, uh, grades and levels of education, and how does it compare to the citywide uh, data? The data is here, which is kind of pretty similar. Um, more information about employment. Uh, as you can see, the Kyrene School District is the largest employer, then Honeywell and Inside Direct Inc. and so on. And also in terms of the industry, the manufacturing is the top one, warehousing the second one, finance the third. So you can see how active it is in terms of the economic parameters. Okay, uh, some images uh, for you to take a look. We take these pictures just to give a uh, flavor of how the area actually visually looks like, architecturally and design wide, design wide. There are big boxes, good landscape, three or four different nice canals and pathways and some artwork here. And then uh, the Tempe Autoplex is one of the bigger uh, outfits. So is Arizona Mill Small. All the trails near the, uh, um, the, the canals actually give a particular image and define the area single family homes and other characteristics. And then uh, some interesting new designs like the Supima as you've seen and some other older designs that are very interesting too. The area is pretty interesting and evolving very fast. Uh, some more of the public amenities, the sports field, the signage, the IKEA building, which is a kind of you know landmark and some other canal side walkways and the residential location. And then because this area has a lot of multifamily units there also, we try to capture some of the varieties of the multifamily developments, uh, which uh, almost 70% of the population here lives on the renting uh, rental units. Yeah, some more of the single family and multifamily residential, these are all multifamily. Okay, um, very quick uh, run on the area trails. These are kind of really preliminary observations by driving through and walking through and taking pictures. We can see single family and multifamily residential in the area, big boxes, some big names, Arizona Mill Malls, Ikea, Costco, industrial use, Emerald Center, Autoplex, Canals, uh, the Western Highline Lateral, Kyrene Brands, the Sports Complex, quite a few vacant sites still, and the railway tracks that kind of uh, also defines the area, and then the power generating stations and the uh, transformers. So with that, I turn it to Jacob Payne, the senior planner. He and I will be working on this all the way through together with the other staff that I mentioned. Jacob, take it away. Thank you, Ambika. Um, so as Ambika introduced me, I'm Jacob Payne. I'm a senior planner with the city of Tempe. Um, so I'm going to run through some kind of high level, more rhetorical questions to get um, some thoughts going, ideas about the type of input that we're looking for from U.S. stakeholders and residents in this area. 
Um, these will be similar to some of the questions that will be asked on the survey that's going to be available online starting today. Um, so things like what physical, social, geographic traits set this area apart and make it unique? What um, traits or elements need to be preserved, enhanced, changed, added, maybe taken away in order to improve the area? How would you rate, um, you know, housing affordability and the opportunity for people to be able to age in place um, for this particular part of Tempe? Do you feel that the current mix and balance of land uses um, is appropriate? Is there certain things you want to see more of, you know, more housing, maybe more uh, commercial, more restaurants, um, things like that? Uh, what's the state of infrastructure? You know, is there places that you think need improvement on sidewalks, roads, water, sewer, drainage? What is one of the single most important changes you want to see in the future of the area? And what would you think is the single most important element that you want to avoid in the future of that part of Tempe? Um, and then uh, a real big question too for this process is we we give our character areas a name that's sort of emblematic of, of the area. So with this one, we're dubbing it character area six for the time being, um, but we would love to hear if you have any suggestions for naming of the character area. So that'll also be on the survey. Um, and if you come up with anything during this meeting, feel free to drop it in the chat or let us know. So we're going to look ahead at some of the next steps that are coming up through the public process of this uh, character area plan and the timeline of it. So here's a look at um, the timeline that we're going through. This takes us from where we're at right now at this kickoff meeting through um, the end of the year, about October, November, which is when we're anticipated to be at city council. Um, but as you can see between then and um, now, We've got a number of public meetings scheduled, both general public meetings, um, some focus groups with nonprofits, uh, business community in the area, um, presentations to various boards and commissions with the city, the Sustainability Commission, Transportation Commission, um, any commission that really has a relevant um, you know, position as part of the creation of this plan. Um, so we're looking towards a summer um, in the June release of the draft plan and then come back to uh, the residents for review of the draft and input on that. And then uh, beginning in August, September is when we would have revised the draft based on the input and, and take it through the public hearing process for adoption. Um, so some more immediate things coming up um, in the future. We're going to have an information table at the Tempe Sports Complex Dog Park. Um, that'll be tomorrow um, from 4 to 5.30. And then also an information table at the Highline Canal Path this Saturday um, from 10 to 11. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, we're going to have our first online survey open, some questions similar to the ones that I've showed you today in the slides. Um, so there's a link to get there. Um, you can also go through um, the Tempe Forum, and that'll be open until February 16th. Um, and as I was talking about on that uh, timeline earlier, this is a look at some of the uh, city boards and commissions that we'd be looking to give presentations for some feedback. So things like the Neighborhood Advisory Commission, uh, Parks and Recreation Commission, Sustainability Commission, Historic Preservation Commission, and the Arts uh, and Culture Commission. So with that, uh, here's our contact information for the project team. Um, you met Ambika, I'm Jacob. Uh, Lucas Jensen is another planner uh, with us working on this. And then with our neighborhood services, we've got Shauna Warner and Brenda Clark. Um, and then we also have with our economic development as part of this project, April Croner. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to email uh, any of us or all of us. We also got an email. Uh, maybe Brenda can drop it in the chat. I think it's just character areas at tempe.gov. So you can always email that uh, email as well with any questions or comments that you have. So with that, we can open up to um, our question and answer. Yeah, I just wanted to quickly add, thanks, Jacob, uh, that we also have a meeting this evening at 6 o'clock at Wood Elementary School. 
within the neighborhood, which is close to Hardy and Cornell. It will be a very similar presentation, uh, but will be there in person. And it will be brief presentation and also open house format that people can come and go and then we can, uh, there will be staff also to respond to any of the questions there also. Yes, thank you for that, Amika. Okay, um, let's go ahead and start taking some questions and we'll open up the floor and I saw Sapan's hand up first, so we'll go Sapan and then um, David Sokolowski. Great, thank you. A uh, great presentation, guys. Fantastic work. Um, the one thing about that's really unique about this character area or this area of Tempe is that it's one of only 32 places in the country where an NFL team's headquarters are based. You know, the Cardinals headquarters are literally right there at Warner and Hardy, uh, right next to Tempe Sports Complex. So just throwing that out there that, you know, maybe we want to mention that as well, that this is that this is really, really unique in that it, it, a professional football team has their headquarters here in Tempe, here at that location in this character area. So I, I th that's my just suggestion is maybe we can bring that up. But thank you very much. Great info. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you. Uh, David? Hi. Um, I was going to try to go to the meeting in person, but I have a doctor's appointment later, so I opted for virtual. But um, so one of my concerns with the character area plans is that a lot of them seem to be very similar to me. Um, I can give some examples where a lot of the character area plans, they have the same um, plant palettes, the same trees. They all talk about aging in place. They all talk about sustainability, walkability. So I wanted to suggest looking at um, doing like a two chapter plan where the first chapter would cover all of the basics, something that the city could copy and paste into every single one of our character area plans, and then have a second chapter that would focus more on this area specifically, um, you know, a specific plant palette. So for example, you might want to promote the polyverity tree and say we're promoting this tree because of its flowers and the seasonal changes but it's still important to have a diverse, you know, uh, tree palette and select trees from the native landscape, you know? Yeah, thank um, you, David. I can respond to that question and maybe others can also join. That's uh, that's a great question and great, great observation, David. Uh, City of Tempe is small and the eight character areas do share a lot of commonalities. And there are certain principles like you mentioned, which are very, Kind of common to each one of us, like the walkability, the shade, the water harvesting, many things are similar. So every character area plans, I would say, you know, 20, 30, 40 percent, there is some overlap there. Also, in terms of the plant palette, uh, there are some differences in each of the character areas, but there are also many commonalities because City of Tempe has like um, other requirements uh, in terms of arterial roads in certain areas and what kind of plants are good, you know, like for the birds of the tree, the tall plants and some of the flowering plants and the shrubs and so on. But your point is very well taken. We do try to tailor it uh, uniquely to anything that is unique about that area. We try to um, incorporate that. Uh, plant palette historically is one of those things that have slightly different variations, but uh, thank you so much for that comment that we really appreciate that and that helps us out. Um, I also want to talk about some of the specifics about this area too, because I've noticed that um, one of the things that's kind of unique near Priest and Elliot is the high number of restaurants in the area. And so maybe trying to promote that so that way, even if we're um, redeveloping in the future, that we continue to retain the, the dining establishments to try and promote. I know like Mayor Woods has talked about this, of trying to promote like a food economy and, and local restaurants and diversity of options. So maybe that that can play a role into this. And also um, the Honeywell was one of the employers that you listed. And Honeywell actually has an advanced urban air mobility research lab in North Phoenix. And that can actually be used to promote um, drone delivery. So for example, with Arizona Mills Mall, and again with Priest and, and, um, and Elliott, um, that can actually increase you know, service in the area, provide tax revenue and provide more convenient options for people. So maybe look at ways that we can do this partnership with Honeywell and look at drone technology and the high number of restaurants in that area and, and use that as part of the character. Point well taken. Um, 
Anyone else have any questions? Uh, Hi, this is Linda Arters on a phone line. I'm sorry, I'm on a old P old PC that didn't have a camera and a mic. Um, that's okay. Is this Brenda? Yes. Hi. Hi, Brenda. Hi. You and I spoke earlier. Um, I wanted to let staff know it was a great overview. Um, I had followed the uh, character areas um, uh, a few years ago. Um, I don't know if message got to staff, but it, um, I live in Sierra Tempe. We're the furthest southwestern uh, corner of the city, and we call ourselves the forgotten part um, from a residential standpoint and that we got excluded from South Tempe. So um, there might be um, there might be some ad advantages for all of us uh, from the residential standpoint, the business of shopping to maybe look at the overlap um, because we're the rest of the character area. I don't think is um, um, uh, as as uh, specific on residences uh, for those of us that consider ourselves South Tempe, and I would say in particular South of Elliott. Um, and then the other point, um, I was asked to um, provide um, input regarding uh, the um, aging issues. I noticed you had a slide talking about aging in place. Um, I have been working with the mayor as a community leader for the past three years on um, aging issues, including the elder abuse and elder exploitation. So it's a particular area that I'm glad to see Tempe is um, addressing. Um, what I wanted to ask as a question, though, was when I saw your median average ages for South Tempe, um, it's much lower than I would have expected to see in an age. Um, number of years. Um, so I guess more specifically, do you have the breakdown of demographics mm -hmm. as far as the different ages? Because um, a lot of the feedback that has already been voiced by residents that live, um, put it south of the freeway, um, is the need for more public transportation for those people who due to age are not um, driving again or driving anymore, or they've lost a spouse. Um, there's unique needs, and it's, it just seems to me we need to know the total number of people that are, uh, I would say, over 50, over 60, over 70, uh, because as you age, and I'm experiencing it myself, we're all noticing things that we are needing help on, and our help is being provided by our neighbors. And we're a very tight network here um, in our neighborhoods. Um, and we've said we don't know if anyone's going to be addressing some of the issues so we can age in place. Um, I think the stat is only 10% of uh, America's um, quote, quote, seniors live in established housing, which would be retirement centers, assisted living, skilled nursing, et cetera. And um, with that number, I think we've really focused, really emphasized this the need that we need to focus on our particular neighborhoods, the community at large, and what Tempe um, will be doing. Because I'm a baby boomer. We're leading the aging as far as numbers. Uh, quite a difference between 10,000 uh, or uh, uh, 10 million representing greatest generation, our, our, our World War II veterans, uh, the generation that's basically uh, ahead of boomers for 10 years, the silent generation has 20 million, and then you get 73 million boomers. Now, that's a national figure, but I think that emphasizes that our country has never had to prepare for what is happening now because we're all living um, longer. So um, I'm very thankful that the city is now finally um, addressing um, my area. And um, as Brenda knows, I um, stand available to do whatever I can as a conduit to um, this area, which I've lived in nearly all my 35 years here in Tempe. So thank you very much again. Thank you, Linda. I can, that those are really excellent points. And thank you so much for detailing out some of the concerns and we appreciate the good work that you do in some of your AVs of past, and that is greatly appreciated. 
Uh, many of the things that you mentioned, of course, are very important for this area and also the citywide. So there are other avenues also that we will kind of tackle this, but obviously we will take this uh, as, a, as, as a priority that you're talking about. A uh, very quick observation is the median is citywide is slightly lower because we really have a really large student population that live very close to ASU, uh, but they're also spread out everywhere. Uh, but uh, otherwise you've got a lot of points now, in terms of uh, breaking them down into uh, more detailed categories, I will ask if Jacob or anyone else from among the staff uh, that uh, we can think of um, getting some data on that one. Jacob, you have any thoughts on that? Um, my, my one comment is, if I understood you correctly, the median age has to skew from the ASU population. Is, is that what you were saying? Yeah, I was saying, you know, when you compare it to citywide, the median age is kind of low is because there's a lot of students uh, in uh, around the AC area. Uh, I, and I understand that. I think that that's the city planners so this a disservice um, since we don't have the entire population of ASU's um, students and professors that do live in um, our city. Um, since since Tempe has always held it itself as um, the small uh, the the small town in the middle of the big city, and we still have that small town personal touch, I don't sense that that's probably part of the characteristics of what we would get talking to a student. Um, and I and I would appreciate it if we could maybe separate also those numbers, and maybe we do it to residents that um, have the right to be voting in our elections and contributing to the tax base. Um, because talking to you know, all our other neighbors, nobody wants to move out of Tempe. We're established here, we like it here. Um, and um, I think that's important for, uh, for city staff and elected officials to recognize, um, you know, we still are a family and we don't wanna push the family out. Excellent point. Jacob, any, any thoughts you wanna add? Yeah, so I was just going to bring up, so this is data that comes from, um, it's either from a census or from an estimation from the Maricopa Association of Governments. Um, so they do give estimates for population that are 65 and older. Um, it wasn't one of the selected attributes to display here, but there's no reason why in the future we can't add it to these tables um, to be part of the discussion. Um, to answer your question about whether or not we can make a distinction about um, you know, voting populations, that would be a little more difficult as most, you know, population estimates occur for people who are living here. They might not be registered to vote or they might not be a permanent, you know, they could be renting an apartment for uh, the semester uh, before moving back to a different state. Um, so that would be a little more complicated to do, but um, certainly the breakdown of, of showing senior populations is something we can um, not only you know, add to our demographic information for the public process of this, but it's something that when the plan is being drafted, we can include that um, you know, statistic of the demographic breakdown as, as a crucial point of the plan itself. I don't understand why you can't get the numbers on the voting residents. We have our city elections, we have our state elections, and um, my reaction to um, uh, wanting to always prioritize the students if they're renting and returning out of state or out of town, then they're not true Tempeans. And, and that is one of the things I think that's really, really important um, to the older population. Um, and and um, I, I believe there are stats that we can pull up. We certainly all have to pay our taxes. So there are records there. We may just have to dig further and I'm happy to help you. All right. Yeah, thank you. Excellent, thank you. you have, I'm sorry, sorry Brenda, I, can I ask one more question? Sure. Yeah, do we have representatives from the business community, from the individual businesses that are participating in this? Um, it, uh, uh, Costco or, yeah. We, um, in the early part of March, the date's not set, it's looking like that first week of March, we are going to have focus group sessions tailored to um, with three different groups, uh, one nonprofit and faith 
um, not a focus group session, and then another focus group session with the business community. Um, so everyone um, in this character area was invited, including businesses and residents. But in addition to that, in, in March, we'll be doing just those focus targeted areas. And we can definitely um, dive in a lot deeper into these different areas in both of those sessions. Um, are we saying then that it's just going to be general um, focus groups? Uh, are they in person? Are they custom designed? They're developed, or are we doing more Zoom meetings? Um, um, how much is this going to be customized? And let me give you the example with Costco. Um, I have quite a number of conversations with the Costco management here in Tempe because we do have a larger number of older people that shop there. And I will say um, they are starting to really pick up that they have to uh, 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 provide some of the younger um, staff as far as how they can go the extra mile to helping older shoppers. And it can be anywhere from reading prices um, to um, um, vision issues to parking to helping load groceries and everything. And that is increasing. Um, I would really like to see our character area reach out to the businesses that really get a lot of heavy duty traffic from um, the residents. Um, because I, I, let's see, if we're just going over to Kyrie and we have Warner Ranch, we, as I said, we are the main uh, residential area here. We do have multi um, family housing. Um, I don't know the demographics in the one up by Warner and uh, Priest, um, but I do think. Um, I do think that's a very, very valuable piece of information and participation we need um, on some of the major retailers. Yeah, absolutely. We can definitely reach out to them and include them and then work with you and with um, any others here and in the community to make sure that we put together um, in-person and online sessions that are helpful to everyone. Um, so we'd be happy to do that. And I'll reach out to you personally, but um, that invitation goes to anyone here that's on the call. We'd love to have your feedback on what you'd like to see out of these focus group sessions. And um, Jacob or Ambika or anyone else that wants to add anything, feel free. Oh, no, I think um, Brenda, that was <clears throat> that was really good. We are reaching out. We're taking a longer period of time for a smaller plan because we do want to hear from everyone. Uh, but uh, we always uh, also remind everyone that one, we have many plans, many planning processes that go together. And one plan uh, doesn't really cover everything. It cannot really solve everything. But the issues that Linda you raised are very important. And um, the invitation, the postcards have gone out to everyone. We have a website. We announce it through Facebook, we contact people like yourself and other community leaders also in person. We want to hear from everyone and your points are very well taken in terms of the business community. We'll have representative from the Economic Development Department in the evening meeting. Uh, we'll also kind of uh, give us a little, uh, respond a little more in detail on how we do the outreach for businesses and other people. Uh, and uh, today we do have other staff and once we have a few more questions, uh, even in terms of landscaping plants and other things, maybe the people from Parks and Recreation can also add in a few things. So we appreciate all these comments. It sounds like we have a good team. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, let's see, um, are there any other questions? Uh, feel free to type them in the chat or uh, unmute yourself, whatever uh, is more comfortable. We're not, not seeing any more come in, but um, I would just like to remind you that I, I placed the uh, survey link in the chat that is open now through February 16th. Please share with your neighbors, your communities, and uh, if you're available, if you'd like to see this presentation, it'll be the same presentation. It'll be tonight at 6 p.m. at Wood Elementary School. Um, we'll get this recording up online within about one business day or so and also the presentation on the project page. If you think of any great ideas, please feel free to reach out to us. We're, we'd love to, to hear your thoughts. And uh, with that, we'll go ahead and conclude the meeting. Thank you for your time. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.